Welcome to this WTAJ News special presentation, Honoring Black History. Now here is your host, Matt Alvarez and Maggie Smolka. Welcome and thanks so much for joining us as we honor black history and how it's made an impact in today's world. For many, honoring the past means continuing to fight for unity in our nation's future. We'll introduce you to community leaders and groups across the nation hoping to do just that. Let's begin with the recent past still playing a critical role right now. In 2020, we saw communities near and far coming together calling for justice. Protests spread across the country following the death of George Floyd at the hands of police. And with it came a renewed focus on racial inequality and a movement in hopes of bringing about change. These demonstrations took place in big and small cities, from thousands of people to just a dozen, all with the same message and the same call for unity. Here in central Pennsylvania, peace marches became a continuous call for action as the group Progress for People of Color was formed. Their goal is to create a constant conversation and spark change for the future. They're the voices of Americans hoping for change. We literally want to be heard. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. The chants that fill the streets across our nation. We have had enough. The residents of central Pennsylvania joining the movement. And I refuse to live in a town that will thrive on silence as long as I am here. The sidewalks in State College filled. Central Park in Johnstown becomes the site of a peaceful demonstration. We need to start locally and statewide and then throughout the country. It doesn't have to keep happening. And hundreds come together to march in Altoona, demanding justice and racial equality. The same problems keep happening over and over and over again. We've let it go for decades and decades, so it's finally time that we have young people who are ready to be active to step up and say that enough is enough and we need to do something about everything. This is all about the issues and what we're going to do to uh, what we want to do to fix the issues and really confronting the really hard topics and the hard questions that are coming up. Darius Morgan didn't want these calls for justice to stop, so he and several others started the group Progress for People of Color. The mission is to be a catalyst for change by educating the community and bringing about conversation. We're very much about helping people to understand that these are issues and that we, they need to be fixed and education on how they can be fixed, things that can actually be done, things that can be done on the state level and the local level, things that we can do as people in our everyday lives to make sure that um, people are protected, people are being treated equally. Because we're not stopping until there isn't a problem that we need to fight anymore. Over the last several months, the group has held various events, bringing awareness to the issues people of color face in our nation and coming up with solutions on how racial inequality can be stopped and prevented. What do we want? We're not looking just to, you know, have protests. We're not looking just to have sit-ins. We're looking to go directly to the people of power and say, this is what we need, and this is what we need to do. Like, this is how you can make change. And once we put those words, once we speak it out and make it into a reality, then it's on our officials to make that change. And, you know, we just have to keep speaking until somebody listens. When we think about change, I can't breathe. It happens only if you have people who are willing to step up and make a difference. Like, let's find an answer for these problems so that they're not going to going to continue to plague our country for the next, you know, 40, 50 years. Although problems may take some time to be solved, groups like Progress for People of Color are a good start to creating a stronger future. And while these groups are being created across the country, one organization in San Francisco is bridging a different divide with help from tech giants. Year Up is a nonprofit whose mission is to close the opportunity divide. Their data shows more than 5 million young adults in the United States are cut off from any real path to a stable career despite having the talent and drive to achieve more. The program focuses primarily on young men and women from underserved communities. They are trained and connected to several big tech, including Facebook and Twitter. Antoine Andrews is the Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer, and he knows firsthand the challenges black students face when it comes to entering the workforce. What we're challenging organizations to do is, in order to close that opportunity divide, there are a lot of, organ lot of young people who don't have a college degree, but are, are phenomenal and can really drive and be excellent employees for, for organizations. So if you 
find a way to eliminate some of those barriers, which is requiring a BA, you can close that opportunity divide and increase your diversity um, tremendously. Europe says they have served more than 29,000 students since their inception in 2000. Welcome back to WTJ's Honoring Black History. Well, an NFL player in the prime of his career walks away from the game to follow what he says is his true calling, educating and empowering the youth in African-American communities. Our Amanda Lee introduces us to Aaron Mabin and his journey from linebacker to activist. Aaron Mabin was born, raised, and to this day lives in Baltimore. You know, I just want to see, you know, the city be um, a city that the world loves as much as I do. Blessed with exceptional talent, Aaron landed at Penn State University, where he excelled on the field. But just years after his selection as an NFL first round draft pick, he made a stunning decision. From a very early age, I saw myself as way more than an athlete. He traded in his helmet and cleats for paintbrushes and a fresh canvas with no regrets. I said if I were to drop dead tomorrow, and the greatest thing somebody could say about me was that, you know, he was a he was a damn good football player, then I wasted a lot of time in my life. Aaron's true life's calling was just beginning. You talk about reforming or changing any society, it starts with the youth. It starts with the investment that we're making in our youth. Mabin started the Project Mayhem Foundation more than a decade ago with a simple mission to help underprivileged and at-risk youth excel. You know, some of my students are, you know, not even in third or fourth grade, but they're in charge of getting four or five of their younger siblings to school every day. You know, when you're walking through the projects, you're walking through open-air drug markets, you know, at the crack of dawn, you know, people get robbed, people get shot, people get stabbed. It happens every day. He works directly with children, educating, inspiring, and showing young black children their value is endless through art. I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. I'm a listener. I'm a listener. I'm a learner. I'm a learner. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. It's an opportunity he's never taken for granted. I am smart. I am smart. Um, until I saw, you know, um, um, an educator that looked like me. I didn't think that they existed. Not that you're ignorant enough to think that it couldn't exist, but you don't know what it looks like. And his work extends beyond his own foundation. What's the day been like for you guys today? Cold. Cold. I'm very, 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 very cold. cold. Very cold. You guys are cold. The wildly successful Operation Heat fundraiser raised more than $82,000 to help warm Baltimore's classrooms. So many of the parts of our educational process invalidate our kids' livelihood, invalidate their lived experiences, and it invalidates their humanity. Aaron's artistic tapestry has expanded beyond boundaries of Baltimore, his workbooks being taught in more than two dozen school districts across the country. And I always wanted my work to be something that um, little kids that, you know, grew up where I grew up that looked like me, um, saw themselves reflected in, saw their complexions, saw their hairstyles, um, saw their history reflected back at them. In Baltimore, Amanda Lee reporting. Thanks, Amanda. Another iconic figure forging paths for future generations, the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. If nothing else, I am proud of the speak up culture that we have. Our people have a voice. The level doesn't matter. I had a I had a one on one with every single person in the organization when I got there. Many know Cynthia Sint Marshall as the woman hired to help turn around the culture within the organization. And in doing so, she became the first black female CEO in the NBA. But being the first is nothing new for her. Turns out she's been breaking barriers her entire life. And you can find her story on our website. We are centralpa.com. And don't let these bigwigs fool you. Positive change comes in many different forms. For example, the group Black Girls Run was founded a decade ago with the premise of motivating women to take charge of their own health. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, four out of five black women are overweight. This group of runners is determined to confront this health crisis head on by encouraging women to get healthy by training together. We are taking care of our families, taking care of being caregivers, making sure that everybody else is taken care of before ourselves. And so we definitely have to educate people that we can't pour from an empty cup. 
Today, the organization has over 200,000 members and over 75 running groups across the country. And sometimes that positive change starts within yourself. We'll introduce you to a local community leader who overcame a dark past to help others have a bright future. That's next. Welcome back to WTAJ's Honoring Black History. Well, there are many inspiring figures across the nation, but this next one is from our area. He's a leader, public speaker, and advocate for positive change in his community. His journey, however, didn't start on such a bright note. Our Alyssa Royster sat down with Nicholas Presley, who says that where he's at today comes down to a single opportunity. In the year of 2000, Nicholas Presley was attending Penn State University. I wanted to be a computer programmer. I wanted to be a video game designer. But the next year, his world flipped upside down. Presley's father was murdered, a deep loss that led to dropping out of school. I was selling marijuana, you know, just to kind of make ends meet, drinking far too much, and, and really just didn't have any aspirations or anything. That path landed him behind bars for most of his 20s. Once free, Presley moved to Philadelphia. First, it didn't, it wasn't any different. I was working food service industry still um, and still struggling with some of the same demons. But then someone gave me an opportunity to work on a political campaign. That political campaign was that of Allison Schwartz for Pennsylvania governor. Determined to turn his life around, he accepted. As a friend of mine said, that was the start of tumbling down the rabbit hole. And he's been tumbling ever since. From working with Sylvester Turner in his race for mayor to Van Jones on Jay-Z's Reform Alliance, Presley isn't allowing his past to define him. I'm not a victim of my past. I could actually use that as a strength to help create other, a future where other people want to go through it. All too familiar with what it's like on the inside. I've been locked up in this, in this county jail on multiple occasions. Presley uses his experience to help others serving time. He started a re-entry support network aimed at getting them back on their feet once released. We know about what it does to your background and how hard it is to get work. You know, I got turned down for working with Penn State just last week because of my background. While he's learned to cope with that kind of news for someone earlier in their re-entry journey. That could be the trigger that causes them to commit a crime and end up going back. Presley says his hope is to see more people like him. I don't want to be a rarity. I don't want to be, you know, one of the very few people in the entire country who can be a campaign manager. From electoral wins to having a hand in the record-breaking turnout for black voters in the 2016 election, Presley says his biggest victory is providing others with that same opportunity he was. In State College, Alyssa Royster, WTAJ News. And while Presley uses a public platform, a young chef in New York is using a virtual platform to inspire others to pursue their dreams. So check it out. Azuria's Bellame is the woman behind Laundry, a pastry shop years in the making. She studied at some of the top baking schools around the world before settling in Brooklyn. And now she started her own YouTube channel where she dishes to followers about what it takes to run a business. But on top of that, she says one of her priorities is being a role model to other women and people of color who are also looking to step out into their own culinary world. Very cool stuff. And still ahead, breaking the glass ceiling in Hollywood. We'll introduce you to an award-winning production designer making a splash on the big screen. Welcome back to WTAJ's Honoring Black History. Thanks for staying with us. Most people think that working in movie business would take you to Hollywood, but our travels while honoring black history brought us to New Orleans, where we meet a woman who is making a big splash on the silver screen. As you'll see, her hustle and grit has taken her to historic heights. I'm a unicorn in the industry. I'm a dark-skinned black woman that does not exist as a production designer anywhere in the world at this level that I work. Make that an award-winning production designer with credits ranging from Black Panther, for which she won the Oscar, to Moonlight, to Beyonce's Lemonade. But what is the job of a production designer on a movie? And I sit down with the director and we talk about like the mood and the look and the colors uh, you know, that we're going to use to portray whatever psychology. 
Hannah Beekler started at the bottom of the film business after moving to New Orleans. Attracted by state tax credits, there's a thriving movie and TV production business in Louisiana, and Beekler did whatever job came along, and no task was beneath her. Someone said I needed to clean the bathroom. I built shelves. <laughs> I, I built shelves in there. I clean. I was went out and spent my own money and bought some brooms and things. And they walked in and they're like, "I just asked you to clean the." <laughs> but I got another job. I got another job. It was that hustle and that perseverance at every turn that continued to elevate Beekler, from building sets to painting, until one day she decided she'd had enough experience and had learned enough to declare herself a production designer. Nobody else knew that, but I woke up that day and decided, and um, I went forward with that in my head. Now I'm a production designer. Beekler also says that the responsibility to have more people of color in production roles rests with the movie business. As hard as the industry worked to keep minorities out, they will have to work as hard to include, because it's not charity, and oftentimes inclusion is looked at as, well, it's charity. No, I'm, it's inclusion because I, I deserve to be here. But make no mistake, hard work is required to get hired. It's a fine line. You can't be a bother, but you can't be afraid. So you need to find the, the, that sort of where's the pocket of how I get in. Production for Black Panther 2 is underway, which will keep Beekler busy through next year. But one thing is certain if she has any say in the matter, we will continue to see her movie touch for years to come. I feed on the challenge because I am such that if you put it before me and say maybe you can't do it, <laughs> I say maybe I can. As many have learned, we should never doubt Hannah Beekler. In New Orleans, LBJ reporting. And I think what's so amazing about all of these stories that we've seen is that the hard work and dedication that these people put into it, that's what gets them the rewards. And it's just amazing to, to see all of these barriers being broken. Exactly. I mean, the journey for her to work on movies like Black Panther and work with Beyonce, that kind of thing. And let's be real, Black Panther 2 is probably going to be awesome. So it's oh, just, 100%. Yeah, it's going to be great. That, that's awesome that she's working with the, uh, that, that kind of movie there, too. And Matt, there's also this. Beekler says that one of the ways that she has been able to pay it forward is by hiring more minorities and newcomers to the business on the films where she manages the production budget. So really cool stuff. Very cool. And from designing looks on the big screen to a young entrepreneur making a mark on America through bow ties. Meet Memphis, Tennessee teenager Mosiah Bridges. Mosiah owns Mo's Bows Handcrafted Bow Ties, and at 19 years old, his business has already taken him around the world and back a few times. Former Presidents Obama and Bush headlined his wall of fame along with a dozen or so other famous people, and now he's taking that success and helping others. He started Mo's Bows Foundation, where he and his mother help other children grow talents into businesses. I thought I've done it with Mo, and it's you know proven to be pretty good. So I just wanted to use the resources that we've made over the years and help and invest um, in other children. It's basically a thing where if we can't leave something behind or if we can't help someone else achieve what I have achieved, then there's no point in this at all. And you can learn more about Mo and his efforts to help future generations by visiting our website, wearecentralpa.com. Stay with us. We're back after this. We hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of the inspiring figures using their past to shape our future. And if you missed anything, we've posted these stories and more on our website. For now, we'll see you later. Thank you for watching Honoring Black History, a WTAJ News special presentation. 
For more information on black history, visit wearecentralpa.com.